What if the way you've been telling your life story reveals the secret to what is holding you back? Stories play an integral part in how we see not only ourselves, but the whole world. Stories are more than just an important part of communication. They also reveal hidden aspects of our inner talk, which can either support us or end up holding us back from the very things we want most in life without us even realizing it. Join author, mindset coach, and award-winning singer-songwriter Carrie Rowan on her show, Look for the Good, every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. when she shares nuggets of wisdom from her internationally best-selling book, Tell a New Story, Five Simple Steps to Release Your Negative Stories and Bring Joy to Your Life. Carrie's powerful stories and compelling guests will empower you to change how you look at your own life while giving you some powerful tools and tips you can use every day to help you feel better and move yourself closer to the life you've been longing to live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Look for the Good. I'm your host, Carrie Rowan, mindset strategist and life coach, and I love sharing nuggets of wisdom about the stories we tell each other and, more importantly, the stories we tell ourselves. You can join me and my special guests as we share our personal stories of strength and triumph every week on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. You can listen online on your mobile device, in your car, or ask Alexa to play Dream Vision 7 Radio. And tune in every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern time to get real stories and tips on how to turn your story and your life around and evolve with us as we unite humankind with universal love. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another edition of Look for the Good. And I am just tickled pink. <laughs> That's a funny <laughs> joke about the ladies that are coming up to talk um, from Pink Chair Storytellers. And I am so excited about this because you guys know we love talking about stories. We love sharing our stories. And I really love the concept of stories. You know that I wrote a book about it, 13 chapters of stories. And why are they important, right? They're not just a form of communication. We've been telling stories since, you know, we've been drawing on caves, right? That's how important stories are. But inside that story, right? In that story, you know, when you're hearing somebody's story, there's so much more to that. It's like a little microcosm of their life, right? Like their beliefs are in there, their limitations, what empowers them, everything positive, everything negative, everything about their life is in those stories. You can learn so much about somebody. And my next two guests know this very, very well because they made a whole magazine about these beautiful stories. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly stories because that's where the real juice is. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes to me and says, oh man, I do, I have one of those stories, Carrie, but I, I just don't feel comfortable sharing or I just can't share it. It's so awful. I know we're on the brink of a breakthrough, right? So without further ado, we've never had two people, by the way, this is a first on Look for the Good. We have never had two gals in we're one. Actually really just one person. We share the same brain at this point. <laughs> That's awesome. This is going to be so fun. Let me, um, I'm going to have them introduce each other because I thought that would be so fun. So Bridget Snell and Marcy Bracken, take it away. Uh, I will start. Uh, this is my other half, my, <laughs> um, Bridget Snell. Bridget is a former editor, art director for trade publications. So I spent many years, um, in that, and you could probably fill that in. I only know the good stuff. That's, that's the good stuff. All right. uh, <laughs> we met, um, in a rating room of a karate dojo where our, both of our kids were taking karate lessons and, um, one thing led to another, and here we are sitting here. Our paths are, we, we have two different lanes, and they merge perfectly together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? That's beautiful. And this is Marcy Bracken, uh, my other half. I tell my husband. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> we really do work together. She's a networking extraordinaire. Um, sales extraordinaire has really lifted this product off the ground in a way that I don't think anybody else could have. Mm -hmm. We do complement each other with the um, editorial side and the sales and marketing side. Uh, we, this, this thing has taken on a life of its own and it's because the both of us are very good at relying on each other to get things done. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We're storytellers. I love that you guys. So, um, 
Bridget, tell us the story of how you guys met. Like, I love the story of the chairs and how that whole thing evolved. So share that with them. I, I think they'd really love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy's like, yeah, I want to hear it too. <laughs> no, I want to hear your version. <laughs> we met, as Marcy mentioned, we were in um, the waiting room of the dojo. And, you know, most moms and dads that are bringing their kids there sit with a book or a magazine or just talk about the weather or the karate, whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, Marcy, I sat down next to Marcy. How are you? small talk, small talk, expecting small talk. And she's like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing great. Thanks. <laughs> Love it. And yeah. It started a conversation very, uh, what's the word? I'm like impromptu, very great. organic. Yeah. I think that might be the word. I'm like, yeah. It was very natural. It was very natural. Um, it, it was very comfortable too. Yeah. I did not feel strange, awkward, opening up to Marcy talking about things. Actually, there were a few times over the several weeks, because we started very much looking forward to sitting in the waiting room with our kids because we knew the other was going to be there. And uh, there are a few times we'd look around and there's other moms sort of leaning in, listening to the conversations we were having because they were so good. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It was really? Everything. Uh, one, one of the times Marcy had just gotten a new washing machine. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's awesome it Such was hard, story. you know washing machines these days are very tall yeah. and if you get a top loading you have to reach <laughs> down and Marcy was having trouble reaching down so I went over <laughs> I went out and got her a pair of very fancy tongs <laughs> she the laundry <laughs> Laundry showed up with them. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this is either going to make or break our relationship, our friendship. <laughs> and she got it right away. And it was, it, 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 it was, was it was re truly a pair of, to I, I've gone to write my own version of the story called how a pair of tongs changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it was that. really special. Um, I had been going through some things with my family as we all do. Um, I was happy to be at karate just to get out of my own space. And I don't know what it was or the look on Bridget's face or the smile that she had um, when she asked me how I was, I actually answered honestly, I which that. I think in, I think is difficult. Yes. I was not, mm -hmm. I wasn't good. And that and the accepting look on Bridget's face, the very calm question of the lean in and yeah. what's going on? Mm -hmm. Well, this is what's happening today. And um, it was, um, I always use this term, it, it just kind of changed my trajectory because I've always been a very guarded person. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of female friends. I found women and maybe it was in my mind to be judgmental to, I felt shame of, I was going through a hard time and talking about that. And Bridget just leaned in and said, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And here's where we tell each other stories. There is some credit, you know, to that. She'll not give herself credit to, you know, saying that that is what happened. It was, mm -hmm. it was her. And, um, mm -hmm. and then we started going back and forth uh, with each other and, you know, no just stories this it's all in the store it's it's how we document our lives it's how mm -hmm. we get through things it's how we heal mend uh, i uh, everything is mm -hmm. is when it all comes out and is not held inside mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. totally and that's you said a couple well, you said so many incredible things but you said the piece about the shame right there's so much shame we have about the bad stuff that might be happening or what's going wrong because everything else looks so perfect, right? Like that's what we think in our minds mm -hmm. behind all the, sh everybody's masks and shields. But when you can let those stories out, especially those sh stories filled with shame about it's really not going well and here's what's going wrong. And yeah, my family's not perfect. We let it out into the light, right? And that shame can no longer survive because mm -hmm. it needs secrecy. It needs to be hidden out in the darkness. And you brought that to light. And that's exactly what you guys do with your Pink Chair Storytellers magazine. And I love this organic story of how it just came and the tongs and all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
I think it's like five years later. I still have chocolates, <laughs> by the way. So you do? Every time I do laundry, I'm reminded of what my mission in life is. And yeah. <laughs> I love that Tong story. Oh my gosh. You got to have a book somehow around the Tong story. Um, but, and it's, and it's also it, like stories help us make sense of things, right? Like when I hear your story, it gives me space and permission to tell my story in all its authenticity. Mm-hmm. And it allows us to know that we are not alone with those stories. Right. That's right. I, I'm not quite sure. I've been struggling to figure out where the emotions that um, come from that make us hold our stories in, where shame comes from, where jealousy comes from and guilt Mm -hmm. and all of the things that hold us back from telling our stories initially. Mm -hmm. openly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure the origins, I don't know, but um, interesting. it's Mm. really fun to sort of flip the switch on it. You know, I, I'm not a jealous person, but I can, you know, easily applaud someone for their accomplishments or things they did. And I know that it feels so good because the impression that I'm giving that person is that I'm there to uplift them. Um, and yeah. that creates a connection that is not, honestly, un- unfortunately is not as common as it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the shame, I'm still not sure where that comes mm-hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe we're all holding ourselves to a standard where we think that we need to appear as perfect to someone for what reason? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Unnatural. (laughs) It's true. But you know, I, I love what you're saying. It's so deep because I feel like it's just been programmed into us from society, right? Like we are so forced to be externally facing. If you think about it from that perspective, everything's pulling for our attention, you know, and so we are, we're worried about, you know, I said, you know, something funny when we were starting talking about the trampolines, what are the neighbors going to think? Right. That is so, it's one of those programmings that we have inside of us. And all it takes is one person saying that to us. And it's usually well-intended parents, teachers, whatever that little story is that we have stuck in our head. You're not a good reader. You'll never amount to much. You know, all those things that makes us us feel shame. You'll never be a good artist. Oh, that one kills me. You're not a good singer. You know, um, all those things get stuck in our brains before we're even seven, right? When that brain is like the spongy, um, you know, we're in that alpha mode. So we're taking everything into our brains and we think it's true. We don't question it. And I have, you know, grown a lot of grown women that come to me and we have to peel back the layers and go, get in there because you have to ask yourself, do I still want to carry that story around with me? Do I really right. care what the neighbors think? Yeah. As, as we've grown and morph, you re you redefine yourself, you know, by the moment when you're, I think, starting a business or doing anything that you feel passionate about. And in my own self discovery, I think even maybe before we started the magazine, you know, when we would have these discussions and Bridget would go, who cares? What do you, (laughs) what do you, what are you so upset about? Or that happened to you? That happened to me. Yeah. And we are actually from, um, this is a whole other story, we're from extremely opposite backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bridget grew up in upstate New York on a farm. I grew up in Connecticut, an hour outside of New York City. I was all about the tri-state area. Um, But these experiences that we would talk about in the course of our childhoods, they were actually extremely similar. I mean, down to, I spent an entire summer uh, out on the front lawn trying to master a back handspring. <gasps> Me too. <laughs> you know, and the story about falling on your head and hurting yourself. And do you go back the next day to keep trying? They were so, so similar. And, you know, the other thing that I realized, and I, I'm circling back right now is to what you had said, they, mm-hmm. they, mm-hmm. They say this is in style. They say this is the appropriate thing. They say this is what you, your life should look like. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who they are, right. but they have been making decisions in my life and mm-hmm. affecting decisions in my life for a very long time. And it was also that feeling of, of shedding them. Yeah. 
who yes. cares about them? Right. Yes. Um, and I learned that when I finally told a true story to Bridget, wait a minute, you're not a them. You're not they, like you're not judging. You're not, you're just really here to support. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what that's like. It's, it's a power struggle. <clears throat> you know, we mm -hmm. give them, they get a lot of power over our lives, but at yes. the same time, we as women have been given a lot of uh, responsibility, blame, um, and and that's a power that's given to us too. So we have the ability, according to so many people, to ruin their lives, change their career, you know, marriage, children, parenting. So they have a lot of power that we give them, mm -hmm. but according to them, the things that we do that affect everything and everyone around us, that gives us a lot of power too. Did they mean to give us that power? Because mm -hmm. if I have the power to change a life, to grow a human and raise them and run a household, have a career, um, but as long as I don't do it to affect so-and-so and so-and-so, I, I have a lot of power. So it really is a power struggle. You're mm -hmm. giving me power and I need to use that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm giving you power, maybe unwittingly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that's what it all comes down to. And, and the question is, why are we giving them power? And what are we going to do with the power that's given to us by society, by our mm. spouses, by our children, by our bosses? Does that make sense? Totally. I love this chain of thought. It's totally a power struggle. And I'm going to add to that, if I may, mm -hmm. how do we take it back? How do we take that power back? Because just like you said, we've got the power, right? And I want to take that power back because back to the idea that everything's externally faced and we're always thinking those thoughts because that's what's programmed into us about what are they going to think? Am I going to be accepted? Am I going to be loved? It's all those needs underneath there that are bubbling up. I'm not good enough. I'll never be loved, right? And so we do, we look outside for that approval. But as we get older, as we know, especially as women, and we have this strong intuition, which I think really is our superpower, mm -hmm. that really strong, innate sense of knowing on so many different levels, mm -hmm. um, on a sensory level, on an intellectual level, on a spiritual level, just knowing. And that I think is our power. And when we can polish that up and remember that actually we really do hold the power to have our own answers inside. And everybody's answer is different. Everybody feels it different, but it's getting in there, right? It's spending the time inside, not out here, not on here. It's spending the time outside, that time that we used to spend outside, inside, bringing it inside, looking for it, honing it. What does it feel like in my body? What's a hell yes? What's a hell no? And I think that's the re-education that a lot of women really need to give to our own selves so that we can take the power back. And when we take it, when we're given that power, we don't give it back. That's what, that's how you take it back. You, you yeah. you're given it and then you don't let it go. You say, yeah. thank you for the power. You know, yeah. you, when someone says, oh, you know, if I hear a friend say, you know, the, the, I'm getting the blame for everything falling apart. Well, he, he or she, or they just gave you a lot of power. If you have the power to make everything fall apart, yeah, <laughs> right. Keep that power and, Ooh. and do good with it. Um, I love that. Give it back to them. Don't give it back and care what they, th they think. So that's how you take your power back. You, yeah. when it's given to you, you keep it, you guard it and you use it wisely. It's beautiful. I love that. You know, I want to rip into a song right now because <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a song called take it back and it's all about this. And if I had my guitar, I would rip into it right now because it's just, it's all about that. Right. It's like, we always had the power, but we gave it away. You know, it's like Dorothy, you had the power all along, right? Mm -hmm. She just didn't realize she had the power. And I love what you just said, because it's like an awakening. And so, like, oh, wow. And it's a change of perspective. Wow. Instead of like, oh my God, they're blaming me and going into the victim story. It's, I really have a lot of power here. And what am I going to do with that? Yeah. And just to circle back just because it this is where it truly makes sense is so now here we are we have this friendship we're totally open we're honest I've I've aired my dirty laundry I, with my tongs <laughs> <laughs> um but you know 
when we decided to create this magazine and, you know, I'm like we said, I'm an ad sales girl. Bridget is editorial. It was the perfect, perfect combination. Our, we wanted every story told in our pages to be told by the woman herself. Mm. She holds the power of that story. Yes, right. She holds the experience. She holds the emotion, feeling, insight, all of those different things. And so we never wanted somebody to say, well, Bridget really felt sad about that. Well, I don't know if Bridget felt sad about that. She might have felt empowered by that. Mm -hmm. So when we were throwing around these ideas of, of having this safe space, first, we wanted to give women the power to speak their stories, to say exactly what happened, yeah. why, growth, setback, joy, tragedy, you know, to educate each other and to say, let, eliminate that shame mm -hmm. um, of, of telling a story, but then also to say, you tell it, yeah. you tell yeah. your story. I can't tell it for you. Right. Right. It's I, very I important. You have the power to do with your story. Also what you want to do with it and let's grow together as women That's right. and as a, as a community instead of against each other. That's absolutely right. The, a good story, a story that's going to make an impact, make a change is all stories are told from the perspective of the storyteller, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we get our curriculums written at schools. And that's how, you know, the fairy tales were written. And that it's always from the perspective of the storyteller. Well, Marcy and I could have been at the exact same event at the same time. And her experience is going to be completely different than mine. So until mm -hmm. we get both stories, we really don't know truly. Mm -hmm how that event happened um right there's always yeah. one story the other story and then the truth and then the third story exactly my mother always says that there's a third in there you know because i like yeah. to say no matter how thin you slice it there's always two sides to to the story and we're gonna we're you left them hanging on this beautiful note because we're gonna be right back after a message from our sponsor to go anywhere Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Look for the Good. We are having such an incredible conversation. I am here with Marcy and Bridget, Pink Chair Storytellers Magazine, and the story of how they started this is so truly incredible, and we're just, they're speaking my speak with the stories. You were telling us about perspective, right? And if you both had the, were at the same event and had the same ex, ex, supposed experience, everything's going to be different because we're always looking at it through our own lens of perspective, right? Glass half full glass half empty. We all have these predetermined things and you can really only see what you believe in life, right? Like if you're looking for something to go wrong, you're always going to find that. If you're looking for something to go right or looking for the good, um, you're going to find that too. So share a little bit more. I love where you're going with that about the perspective and, and how is there a third perspective in there? Well, you know, I think, I think all perspectives are true. It's my truth. It's Marcy's truth. It's another truth. There are facts of an event, facts of a story that can't be disputed, but um, how we all experience things are very different. And I think that is where storytelling is so important. And I, this is a lecture that I give to all women that I meet. Um, and it's the first time that I spoke, um, I was speaking to a group of men and women about the power of storytelling and writing history. Mm. And we were talking about writing your personal story and someone raised their hand in the back of the room and, and said, why does anybody want to hear my story? Mm. And my first thought was, oh, that's very sad. Um, and I had a quick second to respond. So I responded with another question. Who told you that your story doesn't matter, mm. that no one would want to hear it? So, you know, we, I went back to, well, instead of just saying, well, I do, or so many women do, I, I kind of wanted to know who told you that your story doesn't matter. If I don't hear your story, then I don't really know truly what happened. And that is um, an, an unfortunate truth about a lot of the, a lot of what we know about the world around us, about our culture, about history. Somebody was told their story didn't matter let me tell the story. And again, we've already talked about how the story comes from the perspective of the storyteller. Mm -hmm. So there are entire truths 
um, left out of history telling. And this is, uh, we're, we're coming into a time now where the rest of the story is coming out. And I always use the example of hidden figures. Um, everything mm. I thought I knew about NASA and space and Apollo and everything, it, it was rewritten immediately when I found out the truth about what was happening. Yeah. Um, why that, why those three women were left out of the story. I don't know. But once I found out the truth, it changed everything I knew about that. And that can go with everything that that goes with all history telling. So it's very important that when you find yourself asking, well, what does, what difference would it make if I told about this? Um, that you remind yourself, um, somebody, somebody wants to hear that somebody's truth is going to be rewritten, um, yeah. because you told it. So that's, yeah. that's why personal storytelling, um, it, it needs to be documented somehow. And it, you know, we don't all need to write a best-selling novel or memoir, um, but you should be writing your truth somewhere so that your legacy is yeah, for your family, yeah, for your family, I love that. Yourself, for the history books, for those around <clears throat> you. Um, it's, it's just so important and necessary. So I love that you, you, you called it, you termed it reauthoring history on your website. And I really love that because it is so true because we all, because there's like you, the hidden figures, you know, there's, there's hidden figures in our own lives and our own stories. We don't really know the history. You know, I think about your family is like, you know, like, my mother revealed something about her family that I never knew years ago. And it changed my whole perspective of the dynamic there, right? It, when there's missing pieces to things that only the storyteller holds, it finishes the story, right? It gives it a, it can give it a great new ending. Um, mm -hmm. It can empower on, a, on an even bigger level, you know? And I think a lot of people, what you said about um, the gal asking a question is like, a lot of people think that, why would anybody want to read my story. Why would anybody, we all think that at some point, right. When I was launching my book, why is somebody really going to want to read this? So it's in the empowering, it's in the stepping into that power that, wow, I do have something to say just because it's my truth. And mm -hmm. my truth is different than your truth. And everybody's truth is going to be different. That is super, super powerful. You're reauthoring someone else's, you know, when, what I always say to my kids, what do you know? And how do you know it? Mm. how do you know what you know yeah who told you that where are they coming from what's the perspective you when someone says I never knew that that's the biggest compliment you just told them something they never knew and and it changed them and even if it's small mm -hmm. um, it's it's empowering yeah. it's necessary it's the only way and it also creates a connection because we all none of us want to be lonely or feel isolated and that's what not sharing feels like mm. when you feel like, Oh, I can't tell anybody this about myself. You are uh, isolating yourself. Even yep. you can go out and go to every social function that you want to go to, but if you're not being authentic or sharing of yourself that to was others, me. Yeah, that was me. that's a lot of women. Uh -huh. um, it is. It so is. Telling your story is not just empowering. It's creating connection. That is so necessary because even if just one person says, Oh yeah, I feel that way. That happened to me too. Yeah. Um, that's, how, that's how you continue this domino effect of empowerment and breaking the isolation. Exactly. I love that. So all of your stories that you were sharing together created this beautiful foundation. And I, and I love like, you guys are like a little think tank of your own over there. Yeah. And it's like, how did you take that to the next step? How did you say, Hey, we should start something, start this movement with other women to help them feel just what we're feeling by sharing our authentic stories. Well, how did that come about? We were sitting six feet apart during COVID, letting our kids hang out and having coffee. Um, I think Marcy's husband brought a space heater out because I like think it was mid December, December yeah. and we we're outside. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was when we were talking about how the kids are growing and we need to think about what we're going to do mm -hmm. when we grow up and the kids go back to school. And I said, we both said, I don't want to go work for anyone else, you know, and, and we both were like, oh, you know, if I could do anything, it would be, you know, launch a magazine. Yeah. And Marcy mm. goes, well, I used to sell for magazines. And I said, and I was an editor. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> should we? Should we? Let's do that. 
So we agreed upon, we kind of, you know, oh yeah, let's do it. And we started having fun. We were writing lists on what we needed to do. And it was really fun. And as um, I always tell the story as it was, as I was going to bed that night next to my husband, who is extremely supportive, he's the yeah. best. Hmm. We're going to sleep. Good night, honey. Good night, dear. You know, the, and I like tapped him on the shoulder. I'm like, um, one more thing. He's like, yeah. I'm like, I think I agreed to launch a magazine today. <laughs> <He's> yes. Like, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> He's drifting <laughs> off to sleep, <laughs> and you're dropping the bomb. Is, Can I have five thousand dollars? <laughs> Oh my God. I love that. The timing couldn't be any better. Oh, and by the way. Yes. <laughs> and how long ago was that? Uh, three and a half. It was three and a half. We're, we started volume three. Yeah. yeah just wow. recently. Um, we only publish three times a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to call them. We publish collections three times a yeah. year. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it was, it took a was while that- to get the, yeah. You know, we had to get attorneys and Mm-hmm. So from December to March, we pulled ourselves together. Yeah. March, we got our um, official LLC. And so this past March, it was three years. Yeah, that's right. Dun, 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 dun. That's awesome. That is so awesome. I love that. You just had that. It, like, what? You were in a magazine? I, you sold for yeah. magazines? You were an editor for magazine? Like, Should we? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Not? Why not? And the world is better because you guys launched this. Thank you. Truly. We do, you know, Marcy said we do both have such incredible husbands um, and kids raw rawing in the background. And again, you know, there was no they telling us we couldn't or shouldn't. There was only they that we curated ourselves Mm -hmm. and gave some power, shared some power with to keep us encouraged. And um, I don't think I've been discouraged once. No, I've never felt discouragement. Um, no. Wow. No. Partners have been really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how you know you're on the path, right? Is like that, um, that joy, that passion that drives you is bigger than all those beliefs, you know, because if that is bigger, those limiting beliefs are always going to be there knocking on your door a little bit. Oh, what about that fear? You know, the money, the, this, can you find the people? Would nobody likes it? It's always there. But when that desire becomes so big, I feel like it just overrides all yeah. that negative stuff. It's still there. We're not saying it's not there, right? You've mm-hmm. had those moments, mm-hmm. but I love that there was no discouragement. That's beautiful. That's Not to beautiful. say that nobody kind of looked at us like what, ah! but there was right. never, you know, we chose People print. Who which, yeah, you know, <laughs> we're supportive. <laughs> the, the the idea that we were doing this in print was so old school. Yeah. And we, we did not budge on that. Um, it was suggested that we just do this on social media or mm-hmm. on the website digitally and mm-hmm. all wonderful ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the two of us came from this old school print, have to hold it in your hands. You have to be able to soak it up. If you read a book, you put it on your nightstand after you read a chapter and come back to it the next day. And this yes. is very much a similar, um, yeah. Thing, you, you know, you pick up this magazine and, you know, they're anywhere from three to 13 stories in there and some are very heavy and mm-hmm. you have to put it to mm-hmm. the side, come back and and get it. That's why we put so much time between our publications to let our readers really absorb some of the, the truths that they just read. I love that. I'm, I'm old school and that I still love a book. I love a CD. I do. I want to hold it. I want to touch it. I want to feel the energy of that author, that artist. I want to open it up. I want to read the notes. I want to see the picture. I do. I I still believe in that. And I know there's a whole lot of people who do, obviously, because you guys are successful with this. Um, And there is, there's something about holding that in your hand. You look at my nightstand, I've got a lot of books up there. I love giving people time to process it and let it shake out between stories and really take it in. I think that's where the learning comes from, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah. That yeah. is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. it's fun to watch what our readers uh, connect with um, to, to get that feedback. Um, some of the letters we get from our readers are pretty incredible. Really? Um, and some of the, you know, just, I think it was the first issue. Some of our storytellers followed up after 
they submitted an essay or we had a conversation um, saying it would just felt so good to yeah. tell, the, tell my story yeah. Un, uncensored, unedited. You know, we, we allow our um, storytellers that they don't want to write their own story. Mm-hmm. We have a discussion on zoom or over audio and mm-hmm. we transcribe it and we, that's what we print so that it's still authentic from your, mm-hmm. from your own lips. And, um, so some of these conversations, I mean, do you remember the first conversation with Lorraine that we had? It was very, very emotional. Um, there was a lot of crying in that. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Bridget, we, we've separate, not separated, but like Bridget will do a lot more of the editorial and talking with, with the storytellers. Now <laughs> she'll call me and I'm on the road try selling as and she'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> I just got off the <laughs> and the story. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's it's very similar to my work, right? Except we're live. You know, I mean, I I think we've experienced every single emotion on on these. We we've I've had people cry, laugh, everything in between. But that's the realness, right? That's what touches somebody else's heart. And that's the same thing about writing a song. It's like when I write something that is so hard for me to write, that is so true about something that I'm experiencing that I can't speak about, but I can sing about, it goes straight from my heart to yours. And that's exactly what you're doing with those stories. And we do allow other artful mediums of storytelling. You know, you mentioned music. Music is storytelling. Yes, music it is. is a storytelling and all kinds of music hip hop, uh, yes, you know, country music, all of them are, to, who are some of the best storytellers? Well, goodness. I mean, Wu-Tang Clan tells a story. Mm-hmm. Bob Dylan tells a story. James Taylor. Tells oh yeah. A story. Oh yeah. Classics. Uh, yeah. Billy Joel. You could go on and on They're They're all telling a story yeah. of some, of, to and some degree. Poetry. Yeah, so absolutely. We have a lot of photographers and, and fine art uh, artists submit their stories through art. We have a yeah. section in our magazine called just a moment. And it's, mm-hmm. it's for you to tell your story that you, uh, in a different medium than writing. So yeah, I love that caught, caught a story in, in a moment and you shared it. So I love that. So don't go anywhere. Anybody, everybody, we all be right back with Bridget and Marcy. I know you're hanging on their every word. So be right back to look for the good. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Look for the Good. We are having such a great time, and the I should be recording the banter between the conversation, um, but here we are again with Marcy and Bridget, a Pink Chair Storytellers Magazine. Your stories are just incredible, and I love, we started tapping a little bit into why are stories so healing, right? I mean, it's not just for the storyteller, it's for the reader. Talk a little bit about how you've seen the healing aspects of what you guys are doing and bringing this alive for people. First, I, I wanted to say there's been so much, um, so many studies now done about how holding in emotions or you know the different feelings that we have inside our bodies actually have physical ramifications. ramifications. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just in in starting there, um, we can. Yeah, I, I, we had this storyteller. Um, her name's Katarina, the most wonderful woman. Um, she's transgender. Um, we were having this one and, and with Katarina when we were talking. Um, you know, she and I have so much in common with the way we raise our kids. We have kids the same age, and so I kind of wish that I had gotten the banter um, offline as well between the two of us. But after she told her incredible story, we had a reader. Um, write in and talk about how just hearing the words that Katarina wrote, one of the words, one of the things she said is that I'm just, I'm not going to live my life small anymore. I refuse mm-hmm. to live my life small. I think that I immediately knew that was the biggest poll quote that I could find. Um, and that hit that reader and, and the reader wrote in and said, I, I read that and I made a decision right then. I'm not going to live my life small either. And it had nothing to do with the same reasons Katarina wrote that it was her own personal issues that she was dealing with. And just reading those words started her in a, on a new path. And, and she shared that with us. And it was just incredible to know the effect that our storytellers are having directly on the readers, even if it's not about the same subject, yep. just mm-hmm. the, just the, how did you get there? You know, 
a lot of our storytellers know that, and and I'll if you don't know, I'll tell you know your listeners stories have a beginning, a middle, and end, but you don't have to tell them in that order. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the big story happened between the middle and the end, and that could be where you want to start. Um, and so we are getting snippets of those timelines and and a lot of these later in life stories, mm-hmm. these aha moments, these new beginnings happen um, in 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I think that resonates a lot um, with our readers. We've been stopped on the street. Oh, I saw this story in the magazine and I pass it on to a friend who needed to read that. Um, you know, it's it, yeah. it, wow. it, 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 a lot of, of um, a lot of women and specifically, uh, although there have been men readers who are like, yeah, this needs to go bigger than than you are right now. Yeah. Wow. His husband is like our biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I read lo- your latest issue cover to cover. <laughs> really? Thank That's you, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the concept of new beginnings, right? Because, you know, I think about this all the time. And I, and I used to say with my music, uh, when I was, you know, really into the music business full time, it's like, if it touches one person's life, just one person feels less alone or knows that I feel the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing the reach when you put your work out there with no expectation, just that, Hey, I hope that somebody hears this in a way that it helps them or Mm -hmm. and lifts them up. And then when you can get that feedback back directly from that person, the listener, the reader, Mm -hmm. I feel like that is the most satisfying thing in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, even more satisfying, you know, than a bucket of money. And uh, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think it goes both ways also um, for the storyteller and the reader. Yeah. I mean, we've had other storytellers who have said, I'm holding this story in and I didn't know where to put it. Like I'm, I'm ready to get it out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, well, here's a blank page, you yep. know, and, and it's freeing for a lot of the times the storyteller and then I love the thought that it, they might connect with somebody else. It's mm-hmm. freeing for that person. And then that greater um, blanketing statement is that it's also educational mm-hmm. for yeah. everyone. Even yes. if you don't self-identify, I can meet you on the street and I can say, I have no idea what you've been through. So let mm-hmm. me try and figure it out so that I know you better. I relate to you better. I have a you know, can have more respect for you. And also just these stories, like they're just, they form, they, they shape you. You're mm-hmm. could be at the grocery in the checkout late person. I'm like that checkout person, what happened to them this morning before they came into work? No. Right. Absolutely. Something. Absolutely. It, our, our storytellers, at one particular storyteller, and actually more than one anyway, um, have said, you know, what, what, makes me think that pain share storytellers is a a safe place to tell my story. I don't want to open myself up to criticism. I mean, the whole fear of telling your story Mm -hmm. and we're saying, no, you should. Well, we are, are easily able to say, we're telling you it's a safe space because we make it a safe space. We do not open it up to allow others to be critical or judgmental. Mm -hmm. And, And that's our right. And that that's, you know, the, 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 that's the bottom line. Yeah, we keep right. it safe for you. And I think that's also that. the beauty of print. There's not yeah. immediate trolling or judgment or bots or, you know, all the things we're susceptible to these days. Yeah. There's, there's beauty in social media and immediate communication. There is, but just like everything, there can be some scary too. Mm-hmm. And we're yeah. not, we're not, we're safe. So healing that. begins with your telling your story and it can continue. Um, by publishing it in just the right place. Mm-hmm. I love that. The sa- you're offering a safe place, a safe environment where they can share that story and feel heard and offer their healing. And I feel like, I, you know, on so many levels, it's really just, um, it's planting the seed of, it's really nurturing more compassion, right? Mm-hmm. Which is what this world needs is more compassion. When I can, like you guys were saying, when I can understand your story, and you understand mine, we have this deeper bond together. Mm -hmm. And I understand what it might be like to be in your shoes just a little bit more by you sharing those emotions that you were afraid to share. Right. And that's beautiful. Yeah. 
that is beautiful. That's what we want to teach this next generation, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to teach their kids. And it's never too late even for people in, in this generation to learn to have more compassion because I think that's the number one problem with this division in this country, in this world, mm -hmm. is we don't understand and we don't take the time to take a breath and say, wow, I wonder what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So you ladies are creating something absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, and I cannot wait to hold mine in my hand soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So tell everybody, they're all thinking, wow, this is amazing. Where can I get it? Tell them where can they find you? They want to read more about you. They want to see stuff. Where, where should they go? Pinkchairstorytellers.com is our website, and you can click on subscribe in the upper right corner. Um, and while you're there, read some of the stories that we already have on there. Um, but you really do need to hold them in your hands. It's an incredible experience to hold the, the paper in your hands and really look through all the beautiful imagery. Um, you'll see our yes. pink chair all over the pages. Our pink chair is our icon, our ver a more cozy version of those folding metal chairs from the karate <laughs> dojo where we met. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do they come with a set of tongs? Yeah. <laughs> Everything should. Everything should. But yeah, and and then Facebook, Pink Chair Storytellers, Instagram, Pink Chair Storytellers. We're very lucky that we uh, have those. Um, but definitely yeah. the magazine is the heart of it. And, you know, the Pink Chair, come on in, have a seat. You're mm -hmm. be comfortable. You're welcomed here. You're mm -hmm. in a safe space throw your feet up over the side, do whatever you'd like. Um, but just come have a seat with us and, and join us for this ride. Yes. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. I know yeah. that you are touching people's hearts today. You gave me goosebumps a couple of times. And I know that you're onto something deep and I just can't thank you enough guys. Really. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We were honored. We we're honored. Truly. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I want to sit down across from you in the pink chair in person sometime. So let's definitely absolutely. do that and yep. um, go and subscribe everybody because they are doing good work in the world. They are spreading good. They are spreading joy. And this is exactly what the world needs. So thank you again. And remember, go sign up for my newsletter so you can find out when these amazing episodes of Look for the Good are coming out. And I share insider secrets about what we were talking about behind the scenes. And um, so if you want that, go to my website, carryrowan.com. And that's, uh, you know how to spell my name, but I'll spell it anyways, because we like to spell on radio, Carrie, <laughs> C-A-R-R-I-E-R-O-W-A-N.com and click on podcast and go sign up for my mailing list. And thank you, everybody. And remember, it is never too late to live your best story. Be well. Thanks for tuning in to Look for the Good with your host, Carrie Rowan, best-selling author and mindset coach. Join us every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. right here at Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. If you weren't able to catch an episode, no worries. Just visit our website to find all the archived episodes of Look for the Good on demand so you don't miss a thing. And remember, it's never too late to live your best story. For additional resources or to find out about how you can work with Carrie directly, visit CarrieRowan.com for more details.